Electric compressors has been in the market for quite some time now. They're used in electric and hybrid vehicles with high voltage systems. Well, there are a couple of reasons why to apply electrical compressors in these few cars. These compressors differ totally from the technology you know from the traditional AC systems. What's so special about electric compressors? How do they work? Which kind of technology? What kind of oil do they use? And how do we troubleshoot them? And how do we service them? No worries. Nissan's experts are with you and we know answer to those questions and we'll be gladly share them with you. Looks like these are pretty compact devices, these electrical compressors. However, I know they are designed as very powerful electrical machines able to circulate the refrigerant in an efficient way. I know that these are based on a three-phase module, high voltage, high rotation and high torque speeds. That's true, it is actually a fairly simple device that we've seen for many, many years used on normal open type compressors with a clutch. Now we just have an electric motor running an actual uh, spiral or two spirals called a scroll compressor, which makes it possible to actually compress refrigerant in a minimum way, so to speak, minimum uh, using minimum efficiency, to be honest. So that's why the scroll compressor is being used instead of a piston type, which is simply too hard to actually move back and forth. So that's why the scroll type is being used. So it looks like we have the three main components of the AC compressor, which is the electrical motor, the rotor, the, the scroll uh, device, and then we have the control unit, right? That's true. That is actually how this works. Since it doesn't have a clutch, meaning that it's not an open compressor, it's actually a closed type compressor, which we know is from refrigerators and freezers. Uh, we don't have a clutch, meaning that we can actually just use those four pieces and create a compressor that actually creates high pressure. And again, it's a fairly simple device that uses very, very low efficiency used on electric and hybrid vehicles. So under this cover, we have a so-called PIM, Power Inverter Module. That's the device that controls the speed of the compressor, right? True, that's right. It actually controls everything. It gets the signal from the ECU that actually gathers all the information from the sensors uh, around the vehicle. Once the sensors gives the info information back to the ECU, it then sends a signal down to the compressor whether it, the rotation should be higher or lower, whether it needs energy uh, or needs to reduce energy. So that's basically how it works. So there is no speed sensor on the compressor? No. More current means more rotation, more torque? True. And more capacity produced by the, by the system? Exactly. But why manufacturers apply this technology for electric cars? What are the advantages of using specifically this scroll technology? Well, the advantage, of course, less power consumption. Basically, okay. that's the biggest advantage uh, of this, uh, this compressor. Um, another thing is that you can basically put the compressor anywhere in the engine bay, uh, or let's not say engine bay, but anywhere in the vehicle that you want to. It's not uh, related to any kind of dry train, so basically you can put it anywhere. And that's a big relief for the engineers that you can actually put it where you want it to be and not exactly in conjunction with the dry train. There's a little less mechanical elements in it, thus they generate less uh, noise. Uh, specifically when you do not have a combustion engine giving the noise and you only hear something running under the hood. That's true when it doesn't engage and disengage. If you do have a, 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 an old-fashioned clutch that actually does engage and disengage to a certain point of, uh, point of time. So therefore there are uh, advantages with this uh, that could be utilized when having an electric or hybrid vehicle. Definitely. Let's make a review of common failures of scroll compressors. Yep, let's have a look at it. An irregular compressor operation may link, among others, to erratic electrical signals to or within the parts electronics control module. Various symptoms may indicate the problem. Poor system performance, unusual noise generation, irregular operation, works only in some modes or does not activate at all. The high voltage AC compressor may also easily suffer from physical damages, which are consequential to other severe system failures. For example, excessive inner parts friction and noise generation may link to impaired compressor lubrication. 
electrical motor and the control electronics damage by overheating, moisture, ingression, or improper lubricant insulation. Severe defects of the compressor's inner parts, like the scroll mechanism breakdown and the compressor's total burnout, are often consequential to an excessive load on the unit, e.g. by a liquid refrigerant state, lack of impaired lubrication, and thermal stress. For example, by a liquid refrigerant state, lack of impaired lubrication, and thermal stress. Before blaming the compressor as the root cause of the problem, the technician should always thoroughly inspect the entire system. So now we will share with you a couple of tips on how to diagnose this type of HVAC compressors. But first and foremost, we have to do a complete overview of the actual AC heat pump system to ensure that the compressor isn't the root cause, or if it is the root cause. The compressor diagnostics process should start with a basic inspection of the system to reveal if it is in an operative condition. The basic troubleshooting should include an overall system performance check, cold or warm air delivery in the cabin and output in various heating cooling modes, cold or warm air delivery in the cabin and output in various heating and or cooling modes, static pressure control to reveal if there is enough refrigerant in the loop, the system working pressures check, thus the compressor pumping capacity and possible flow restrictions, system inner cleanness inspection, Visual inspection of the loop components is an essential part of the initial check of the system. In this process, pay attention especially to the loop elements, couplings, and possible leakages. Pay attention to oil residues and attached dirt. The condenser surface. See if it is not soiled, free from airflow restrictions, and has not deteriorated fins or tubes. Any failures must be inspected and repaired, as they may be consequential to the AC compressor's improper operation. Inspect also the AC compressor. Control if the housing has no signs of overheating. For example, pay attention to discolored surfaces or burned labels. Check if the electrical connection with sticks and insulation is intact. Having access to the AC compressor, inspect it also audibly. When operating, control if the unit does not generate any suspicious sounds. Unusual grinding or growling noises may link to improper control or damage of the inner elements, such as valves of the scroll mechanism. Now you can run the onboard diagnostics to pinpoint possible compressor issues registered by the HVAC system control unit. The registered failures may relate to the AC compressor and one of the system's elements generating control signals, for example, sensors or power electronics. Now we are about to determine the compressor's electrical state of health. Remember, whenever dealing with high voltage devices, safety must be first. That is why I recommend to apply safety measures. Besides that, we highly recommend that you read OE specification issued by the car manufacturers. You should observe step-by-step -step guidance that are issued by producers of these devices. Electrical diagnosis of the high voltage compressor is a relatively simple process you will need a suitable oscilloscope and a current lamp. In most compressors, there is no direct access to the power inverter module three-phase connections. Thus, inspecting the currents inside may not be possible. The module is sealed and integrated within the unit. However, the AC compressor has easy access to the high-voltage DC wires. Acquiring the current waveforms from one of the DC wires will help us determine the compressor's operational health and its drive system. Get access to one of the HV wiring gently and connect the DC current clamp to it. Now read the signals provided via the clamp. Use for this purpose a suitably set oscilloscope. The inspection should provide a good view of the three-phase current as a kind of pulsation wave seen on the capture. Before the compressor engages, the current is usually zero amps, that is, no ripple is generated. A peak wave can be seen by the compressor's initial start, which indicates much higher than average current applied as an inrush mode of the compressor. Shortly after, the current is significantly lower and depends on the output commanded to the AC compressor by the AC controls. Here, the stabilized wave picture of the three-phase current helps determine the compressor's electrical shape state. When the wave's shape 
that is, the height and frequency, is consistent and close to identical throughout the capture. The compressor's electric motor and controls are in proper condition. Any significant increase or decrease in the wave's amplitude can signify a severe problem with the power inverter module or the compressor drive. Along with the current irregularity seen on the oscilloscope, a faulty operating compressor would also exhibit some unusual noises caused by the electrical phase imbalance. Since the AC-EC has an integrated PIM, this would mean the AC compressor should be replaced as a unit. Keep in mind that when placing a compressor that's broken down, it's very important to define the root cause for that compressor to actually break down. There could be many reasons to do that. It could be the solenoid that that's broken, could be the condenser that's broken, could be wrong oil, too much UV dye, and so forth. But it is very, very important that you find the root cause so that the compressor doesn't break down again after a little while. Remember, only professional and qualified staff can replace an HV compressor. This is a high voltage device. Please follow the safety rules that apply for dealing with refrigerants as well as with high voltage installations. You should also use specific consumables that apply for this kind of cars, as well as dedicated tools that are suitable for high voltage installations.